Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 888. That's an interesting number. Got some resonance and it's a good sign. Um, topic today is basically about love is work. I raised to do the job. And I'll explain what I mean by that and hopefully you'll get some understanding because love is not as easy as you might think it is, at least not the way I'm not the way you're looking. Before I get into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about and why I do these talks every day. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my talk. If you don't already know, that's me. Um, I am an inspirational speaker, um, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. Um, also, help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine. Hi, Carrie. Good to see you, sir. Um, that's also what started these talks almost three years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And these talks now have been going on, say, almost three years. This is why I'm episode number 888, Such a weird number to be there. So, um, so I want to speak about love as, as a job. Now, there's something going through my mind right now, just to be transparent. I'm in the process actually of, of converting a book that I was part of into Kindle format. One of my other career skills is I'm a publishing expert, apparently. Um, anyway, I'm converting the book into Kindle, and so I'm re-reviewing and rereading the chapters of the book from all the 26 authors in the book. And realizing so much to the top conversation about relationship, about love, and about what we do right and wrong, that I want to explain a few things. Now, for many people out there, maybe not you, but people you know, maybe it looks like their relationship is going fine. And you're thinking, there's no effort to relationship. It's easy. Look what they're doing. It's no problem at all. But having just... Um, watched a, actually I was actually, on a, I was actually on a group call earlier today, one of the guys in the call talks about he was on his third, fourth marriage, excuse me, fourth marriage, and he's younger than me. <laughs> so it would appear that relationship may not be that easy. And I'm actually leaning more towards the latter part of the camp because the reality is most of us have no education about relationships. In fact, most of us, the edu education we get is the uh, how do I want to describe it? <laughs> the informal, abstract, not even abstract, but the informal practice of watching other people and how they do relationships, I think that's the teaching we get. So we learn basically by watching other people, particularly our parents and elder relatives. We look at that as the model, the template, the format of how relationships should be. Now, the problem with that is, for most of us, is that we wouldn't want to choose that intentionally. And that's the thing, it's not intentional. We actually choose, I should say, we look at those relationships from a default place, an automatic place, almost a hypnotic place. I was listening to um, Bruce Lipton recently. He was talking about how up to the zero age of seven, we spend most of our time in theta level um, frequencies. That frequency, because it's a frequency of our minds, which means that basically we're under hypnosis. So we learn everything around us as if we are a sponge taking in what's around us, not intentionally, not with conscious effort, and not with any filter going on. So everything we learn has actually been put in by what was happening around us. So if you weren't in the perfect environment, the perfect family dynamic, the perfect um, upbringing, you may have picked up some habits, some beliefs, some programming, some education that isn't what you really want. So when it comes to your adult relationships, you might discover, you might, look, you might be aware of if you look back at your past relationships, where you might have had patterns happening more than one time the same way. In fact, you may be looking back at your past relationships and going, damn, I keep doing the same thing. How do I keep getting here? How do I keep ending up here? That's the problem with not knowing what you need to do. Now, let me say another way. That, that, was, that was not very polite. <laughs> that, that is actually the way that we learn how to do things. And 90% of the things that we learn how to do, we learn by either um, copying other people or by default presuming what they say is right. If you look back at your academic education as a K through 12 in America or five through 18 in England or other countries, you're probably thinking about how many things you learn at school you never use. Well, relationships are kind of the same way except you don't have conscious volition to ignore them. <laughs> you know, at school for most of us, maybe it's just me, I don't know, during my school years, I certainly ignored certain things that were being taught. Oh, that was an admission of guilt <laughs> or admission of lack of choice. But the reality is, 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 as an adult, I've already put my heart and soul into education on a different level. Education that transformed my experience of relationships, transformed my, and transformed my experience of interpersonal relationships, 
and it's put me in this path for the last 30 years of learning how to be interactive with people on a different level. But none of that happened in my academic education, and it certainly didn't happen in my early upbringing before the age of seven. And I would suspect the same thing's true of you. So the pattern I'm talking about here is one that has been imprinted, it's almost like, um, ooh, that's an, uh, <laughs> I just had a picture of an analogy, sh analogy, an analogy shop that might be kind of bad, but let me imagine, let me put it this way. Now bear with me, I'm not, <sighs> should I say this one? This is really interesting. The image I had was basically imagining that you have a suitcase that you're packing for a trip. But what you don't know is that the bottom of your suitcase is a false floor. And everything you put on top of that is on top of the false floor. But underneath of that, okay, that's safer. I'll do that. I was going to talk about some nasty things. I'm going to be careful what I say because I don't want to start getting into trouble with uh, <laughs> certain people. So underneath that false floor is a, is a bag of... Um, Rotten fish. There we go. That's a good, that, that'll work. That's an analogy I can use. So you got a, you got you put your stuff in on top, but underneath is a is a bag of fish. That's, actually, it's fish that's going rotten. You don't smell it at the time you put stuff in. So you put your stuff in your suitcase, close it up, and away you go and do your tra do your trip. There is there is an analogy here. You know, I'll get to it in a minute. What you don't realize is that on your trip, the suitcase basically is getting warmer and colder and changes in temperatures as you travel on the plane. You fly, you land, all these travels you do. Get to your hotel and open up your suitcase and suddenly you notice that everything in the suitcase smells of rotten fish. But you don't know why. Because the false floor is still um, out of your awareness. You're not aware there's a false floor in the suitcase. What's it got to do with relationships, you might be wondering. Because <laughs> I was wondering when I was saying it. The way I would frame it is, is that we think we know what we're putting into our relationships. We think we know how we can express it, how we're putting our foot, best foot forward. We're, we're, we're reaching out, we're doing the dating apps and sites, we're meeting people in social environments, we're doing all these great things to meet somebody. That's your, that's your clothes in the suitcase. Underneath that false floor, unfortunately, or unfortunately, now you look at it, your imprinting of your childhood patterns, which is the rotten fish, for most of us it was rotten fish, the equivalent, means that even though you may choose to go out and go in the leading world in a really great way, your subconscious program is going to influence like a bad smell. <laughs> it's an interesting analogy. Everything you do in your adult relationships. So if you don't clean up your early childhood smells, <laughs> meaning the rotten fish, energetically speaking, you're going to keep repeating the same patterns as an adult. Well into your late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. It doesn't change. Those imprints don't go away because of your, your, your maturity. It happens all the time until you're willing to look at it. The work I'm talking about in the title is being willing to face your own <laughs> rotten fish, your own patterns, your own wiring, your own programs that are in the way of you having the love you want. Now, once in a great while, somebody goes through life with amazing relationships that always work. Now, there are children of people who are gurus, teachers, experts in different areas that may have learned the right way to do things from their parents. Happens, rare, but it happens. They may have an easier time of it, although frankly, I think all of us pick up something from our parents that wasn't ideal. That maybe influenced our relationship from a bad way. I talk about my upbringing. When I was raised in a family that was so wonderful. It was like my parents got on really well. Um, there were never any arguments that I was aware of. Unfortunately though, when I got into a relationship, any time there was an argument, I would leave because my wiring was set up, set up such a way is that I caught, according to my upbringing, there was no arguments in a relationship, which means the counterpoint of that is, if there was ever an argument, that wasn't a relationship. That's the wiring I took on without even realizing it. I didn't, know, I didn't figure this out until my late 20s. So all of my dating experiences through my teens and 20s ended with an argument because the argument was my cue to quit and leave. I should say my, that the argument was my cue to disengage from the relationship because it wasn't a relationship anymore in my book because arguments and relationships don't go together. So when one happened together, one had to leave. I couldn't get over the argument, so I got out of the relationship. So even though I had a great upbringing, and the wonderful parents who were together 59 years till my mother passed away. It still created challenges in my adult relationship dating experiences. So I suspect that everybody has that experience. Very, very few people, very few people have a perfect adult relationship experience. Unless they've been willing to look at their own smelly fish and do the inner work first to attract the relationship they really want. What's been interesting to watch is I've been seeing a lot of people out there who are matchmakers, dating coaches, um, that sort of thing, because I'm not trying to title, who basically consider this whole thing as a dating game. 
which excuse me, excuse me, a numbers game. I'm afraid it wrong for a second there. Well, basically, if this doesn't work out, put in the next one. If that doesn't work out, put in the next one. If that doesn't work out, put in the next one. And so on, and so on, and so on. If you got what I was talking about, it doesn't matter how many dates you go on, doesn't matter how many people you go out with, doesn't matter who you meet, you're taking yourself with you. You're taking your patterns with you, your programs, your, your <laughs> smelly fish with you into that next relationship. So if you really want to have an amazing relationship and you're not getting it yet, this may be the key that opens the door for that to happen. This is why I do the work I do, because I hate seeing people in painful relationships. It's not like I'm going to go fix them because they have to choose it. And that's the thing with clients. I can't convince you to work with me, but if you want to do the work, I'm here for you. And my experience with friends, family, people I know in relationships, I look at as being dysfunctional or not as good as it could be. It's not my place to say anything unless they ask me for, for guidance. I mean, I do have people who reach out to me saying, can you give us some clues and guidance? And I will help, help them. But for people who don't want the help, I don't want to put my foot in this. not my role, not my job. My plate is full working with my own clients. And I'd rather work with clients who want to do the work and who commit to working with me so we can have that happen for them. So if this is resonating for you and you want to get help, I'm going to put some links in the comments so you can find out how to work with me. Yes, I'm promoting myself here. This is my Facebook Live. I can do that. So my first thing I'll put in the comments as a reminder to you is you can always reach out for a conversation with me. If this is, tr if this is triggering for you, if this smelly fish idea is getting you um, distressed, good. Click on the link that I'll put in the comments after I sign off, which is a link. Thank you, Carrie. Yes, family time. We'll go take care of your family. Is that the Chinese family or the American family? I saw your post earlier. They cracked me up. So you're welcome, Carrie. And I always love to you and your, your wonderful relationship and your lovely family. Um, one of these days we'll catch up. Um, so finish up my point. So if you haven't reached out for support before, this may be a good time to do so. So I'll put a link in the comments to have a chat with me. Complimentary conversation where we can talk and I can see where you are and give you some guidance and offer some solutions if that works for you. That's one thing I put in the comments. There's two other things I'm gonna put in the comments um, because there's some new stuff happening for me. One of which is that I am that I just um, just launched yesterday, day before, yes? Yesterday, <laughs> I just launched. Um, my stress reduction pr um, group program. You got in late, yes. Well, get Mary, you, 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 I, I did drop a really interesting analogy earlier on, so make sure when you finish, you go back and watch the beginning. I went into a different path than expected. <laughs> so so this, um, this November 15th, which is in 10 days, eight, seven days, I'm, launch, I'm starting a new group off, we're starting together, a two month course called Thriving Through the, Hol Thriving Through the Holidays. Because this is the time of year, and I mentioned earlier about relationships with parents and the family, family imprinting, where all that stuff starts to show up. And Thanksgiving, especially in the American culture, is a prime time when that happens. The reminders show up, the triggering shows up, the discomfort shows up. So rather than working one-on-one -on -one with people, I'm all, as well as working one-on-one -on -one with people, excuse me, I'm also offering this group opportunity to work together, which is called Thriving Through the Holidays. And it runs from November 15th to January 15th through all of the winter holidays to make sure you get taken care of. So I'll put the link in the comments and check it out. Have a read. If it resonates for you, sign up, get started on November 15th. I'm throwing a couple of gifts right up to the bat. And a lot of bonuses going to be in there as well. So it's a special gift that I'm putting out for the holidays. Uh, secondly, I've just launched a new group this past weekend. Lots of stuff is going on. Um, called the Dance of Polarity. And it's a group that is basically intended to provide insights, information and help around the masculine feminine conversation that I've been invested in for the last 12 years. So this is my opportunity. This is my invitation, my offering and your opportunity to play in that arena. So I'll put a link in the comments for that Facebook group so you can join if you wish to. Um, I post different Facebook Lives there. I do post some of these in there, but not all of them. Um, I'll be posting some Facebook Lives that are just for that group because they're different orientation. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, so that's three things. And I'll put a reminder in about the self-love practice because it's time. If you're not loving yourself first, you end up with a suitcase that's not going to work if you know what I was talking about earlier. So my self-love meditation will be in the practice in the comments too because that will help you get more oriented towards the way you want to be in your life to attract the love you really want. So with that, I think I've got everything said in terms of links, where I was covering topic. Um, replays if you haven't seen my broadcast before. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. Join me every day. If you haven't seen me before and you want to see my replays, or if you missed a bunch of things, you're going to catch my replays, there's two places you can find them. One is on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author, where you can find all my replays that Facebook allows, although not all of them show up because Facebook doesn't present all of them for some reason. 
which is, so again, Barry Selby, the author, please like my page. Or better yet, if you want to catch all my broadcasts and, easy, and find easy to sort through the titles, I recommend them on my YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, there's a, there's a channel, which is I, which that's my channel, say the right way around. Please subscribe to the channel and there's a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. You find all my broadcasts from oldest to newest. You can search through them by keywords, by titles, however you want to search through and get all the help you need. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to start taking some of those and making little packages you can buy because some of the teachings in there are more of a um, thematic and people aren't always watching them. So this way you get to get smaller doses of the teachings. Um, just planning ahead. So with that, um, I think we're doing things. So replays, links you're going to check out review what I said. If you're joining in late, please start from the beginning because there was some, I dropped a big piece in it for helping you. And if you need some extra assistance, you know where to find me. You can message me over social media as well and check out the links I'm providing because they'll help you as well. So know that the work involved is worth doing, that what you really want is that it's possible. You gotta be willing to do the work and invest in yourself, invest in the support and invest in your future so you can have what you really want. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And once again, thank you for being here. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.